Hello, my name is Jasmine McDonald. Welcome to my channel. I am a professional ballerina as well as a certified personal trainer. I also do dance tutoring online, so I'll put my link down below of my lessons if you want to give a go. I offer my first lesson if we haven't worked together for free, and I also have a promotion going on for 50% off if you buy 10 classes or more with me. Give a click down below, see what I offer. Let's get into this video. Today I'm going to be telling you a little bit about how I became a ballet dancer at a late age. That's right, I started pretty late into the game. Most dancers to professionally train begin their training around nine or 10, even earlier sometimes. But I actually joined a professional ballet school when I was 14. Now before then, I did train since I was three or four. I'll put some pictures of when I was a little kid. I did ballet maybe once a week, jazz, tap. I also went into competitive dancing around the age of 10 and 11 which still is pretty late for competitive dancers. I think I was actually 11 or 12. So most competitive dancers, if you're not familiar, join when they're eight, nine, starting to jazz, lyrical, all these different kinds of genres. I remember seeing Svetlana Zakharova in a video on YouTube and I just, I watched it for like two days straight. I was mesmerized and to this day, she's still one of my favorite ballerinas. When I was about, 11 I'd say, I auditioned to be on the competitive team at my dance studio for the competitive troupe. Now if you're not familiar with competitions, basically you work on a routine for about four to five months with your dance studio. That goes anywhere from group routines, lines. For my first year I did mostly groups and lines. I didn't have any solos or duets or trios because I actually joined the pre-competitive team not the full competitive. After a year of that, I joined the full competitive team and I had my first ballet duet and oh my gosh, that made me so happy. Ballet to me at that moment, I remember trying on the tutus and my teacher just was so inspirational. We danced that duet my second year of being in competitive and I think I was 12 at the moment. It was this year that I decided I'm going to go full-fledged and focus into ballet which again is pretty late at 12 to begin to start to think about ballet as a full-time career for the rest of your life, is pretty late. Nonetheless, I watched hours of Svetlana Zakharova, Natalia Osipova, all these beautiful Russian ballerinas were just popping up all over my screen and I just, my watch time was probably four or five hours a day. Anytime I could, I'd get home. Instead of playing webkins, I'd go on YouTube and watch ballet videos. I'd stretch my feet, I'd watch ballet videos. I was a ballet nut, a ballet nerd. So, anyways, it was this year that my teacher actually pulled me aside from the class, as well as my ballet partner at the time. And our ballet teacher, having danced at the Royal Swedish Ballet, had a really good eye for kids who would be suitable to audition for schools, whether that be because they are just naturally flexible, they have the passion, you know, you can really tell when a kid just loves what they do, and I think she saw that. So she actually recommended to me and my partner that we should audition for the National Ballet School of Canada. I auditioned that year. Did not get in. Did not get in. Nothing. I had been dancing since I was three or four, but that was really once a week kind of things. I was really into piano, swimming, a ton of different things, but when I really zoned into ballet was that year before or the two years before. So I clearly wasn't re ready. I just wanted to do the audition anyways and see what would happen. I didn't get picked, so I went back home. I remember when I didn't get in. I think this was the year during the Olympics when Canada was playing USA for the gold medal for hockey and my parents went inside and I just stayed in the car sobbing and then my mom was about to go in, she used the door and was like, do you want to come inside? The game's on, it's in the last, <laughs> it's in the third period. Anyway, she stayed with me, bless her heart. As soon as I felt rejection and not just rejection, but not even an offer for something that I was so in love with. I remember this year was when I really had a fire under my butt. I was not that advanced. I had only started seriously dancing for the last year or so. 
for about a year until the next audition, I told myself, I'm gonna get into the school. I remember looking up the school all the time and watching videos and being so excited about the next year. I stretched, and my mom can quote me on this, every single night <laughs> watching TV, I would sit on the floor, stretch, do my middle splits, because I didn't have them yet, do my lefts, do my rights, especially my rights. I was really icky with those. I was like this high off the floor. I worked so hard and that year, this following comp year, we did really well in our ballet duet, which led us to get another ballet duet the next year and I got a ballet solo. I'll put a little picture of my ballet solo up here. And it was so much fun, I loved it so much. And that was the first time I was alone on stage and had the tutu and was just like, I need to do this my whole life. So I auditioned that coming year and I didn't get in. <laughs> I didn't get in again and I was destroyed. I was absolutely destroyed. Again, sulking for days, days and days and days. And then a phone call comes five days later and they offered me the summer school. They said, we know we didn't accept her at the audition, but we couldn't stop thinking about her for five days. And we've been trying to reach you, but my mom was full-time teacher. My dad was going to school and also running the youth center on the reserve that he's from. So it was just crazy busy in that household, plus I'm going to dance till 9 p.m. every night. So we got that phone call and I went for the summer school. Absolutely transformed everything. I think that was the most I've ever improved. I had my teacher and I could just feel she believed in me. And once you have that bond with the teacher and they really believe in you, the work that a student can do under positive reinforcement is phenomenal. And I could see it. My parents saw it too. They came to watch and they noticed that I improved so much. And in class, I was just hyper-focused because I loved what I was doing. They did actually tell my parents that they didn't think that I would get into the school. That's why they didn't offer me the position, but they thought it would be a good experience for me because they, see, they saw how much I loved to dance. That's a tip. When you show adjudicators or dance teachers or choreographers how much you love what you're doing, it doesn't matter your level. If you show them how much you care and how much you want to improve, they're more likely going to consider you than putting yourself down. And I think that was the big difference between the two auditions that I did. The first audition, I think I was just nervous and I was, I was just sweating. I was about to hyperventilate every two seconds. And then the second audition, I just, I showed them how much I love to do ballet because I had that experience on stage with my phenomenal dance studio. Back to the summer school, amazing, made these awesome friends, loved it. And we got a call two weeks in or three weeks in to give me a full-time spot in the full-time professional ballet program. And we took it, it was difficult. My parents worked so hard to put me through it. I danced at the school for four years and then I had an injury after I graduated so I stayed an additional year in the post-secondary program. From there, I got my first job. Okay, so my first job, my director actually had these connections with different companies in which they needed extras basically in a ballet and they needed two extra dancers for Sleeping Beauty. So I went with this one girl, we flew over to Germany to that company and we danced in Sleeping Beauty, the flower waltz. That was my first professional ballet contract. From there, I kind of took tours all around Europe. I danced, I auditioned for Royal Danish, I auditioned for Dresden because that's the company that I was dancing with. I auditioned for multiple small theaters in Germany because I was around there. And then I sent out my stuff to the Romanian National Opera in Bucharest. I flew home and they asked me to come back. So I flew back there. Oh my gosh, the plane tickets. I don't even want to think about it. I got a job in Bucharest and I stayed there for four years. The real takeaway that I want to share is that no matter how much rejection you get, never stop working towards what you want to achieve. Even if someone tells you you're not the right fit or we want somebody that's smaller, somebody that's taller, 
somebody that's stronger I always got that one I again started late that was my biggest weakness that I wasn't physically as strong as most of the other girls in auditions or most of the other dancers in my class because I did start later I started point work when I was 14 I started much later than most dancers nonetheless no matter what anybody else told me, I always told myself, this is what I'm meant to do. And I still firmly believe that, even though we're in this pandemic, we're in the midst of this whirlwind, I still come back to myself and know that I am meant to be doing what I'm doing. And that is still sharing dance, but sharing it in an online platform as it's not available to a lot of people. I am sharing my knowledge and passion for fitness and I'm still dancing in some shows. I, the last show I danced was last year, right before the pandemic, but I've been doing some freelance work and I could not be happier. I hope this helped you if you are late to starting. Just stay determined. Don't let anybody else tell you that you can't because you surely can. Even if somebody doesn't want you for something or you don't get the job that you want to get, there's always going to be another option and there's always going to be an opportunity. Anyways, I hope this helped. Have a great rest of your day. Stay safe and thank you for watching. Bye.